Hello, welcome to Reader Rambles. My name's Alex. This is Reader Rambles, a podcast where I ramble about bookish topics and I help readers navigate life. This is the second time I'm recording this today because I thought I was recording earlier and I wasn't. So that's fun. <laughs> that's the only time that this has actually happened during this podcast. So it was bound to happen eventually. But hello from my room. It is Friday, February 4th at 3.15pm. I hope you're all having a great week. I hope everything is going good. And if not, I hope it's getting better or it will get better. I'm stressed today. <laughs> After all of that happening, I was stressed because I was going on. It was a good episode, but we're just going to make a better one. So today I am talking all about my bookish apps and I'm really excited for this topic. I wasn't sure of originally what I was going to do. I did like a call out on Instagram. If you ever want to submit a topic, there's a link down below to a form that helps me because sometimes I get stuck and I'm not sure what I want to talk about. So today's topic is all about the bookish apps that I use and my favorites. I'll be talking about some of the pros and cons of the ones that I use and all of that. So stay tuned and let's get into the episode. It is Friday. I am stressed today because of all of that that happened. I haven't been reading this week because I've just been super busy and like it's just been a lot. I've been doing a lot of editing. I actually filmed a lot of videos this week. Uh, I haven't done that in a while. Last month was like really rough but I got some things filmed and I am currently working on my video. Hopefully it'll- no it's not going to be out after this but it'll be out hopefully this coming week that you're watching and listening to this podcast. It is a video where I tried some bookish products, so I'll say that, but I'm excited. I finally got it all filmed and I'm excited to get it finished. It's taking a while because it has a lot of things in it, but I'm really excited. I just have to get it edited. I started editing some of it, but it's going to be a really long edit, but I'm excited. So I am currently reading Game On still. I'm still doing that vlog. <laughs> um, this is why I just don't give myself goals because I can never stick to anything. But I just haven't had any motivation to pick up a book. And especially if it's on my iPad and it's not like a physical book, it's a little bit harder. And it's an arc, so it's also harder, but I need to finish this book. So I'm hoping for that to happen. Hopefully this weekend, I'm not really going to put a time on it because who the fuck knows when it's going to happen. <laughs> However, I am very excited for this weekend because it is the NHL All-Stars and it is also the Olympics. They started today, so that's really fun. It's the Winter Olympics. I love the Winter Olympics. I think you should know that or it shouldn't really come as a surprise. I love winter sports. I hate the season winter, but I love winter sports. I specifically love the figure skating and I also obviously love the hockey. The NHL players were not invited this year because of COVID, but I am just so excited to just watch all of the hockey. It's going to be fun. This weekend is the all-star game for the NHL. It's my favorite event and it is a lot of fun. It is set in Vegas this year and basically it is a whole like skills competition fun time where they pick one or two players from each team and then they're divided in their divisions. So the teams are the Pacific, the Atlantic, and the Metro. And so I'm the Metro. And actually my team, the Philadelphia Flyers, their captain is our captain, Claude Giroux. And I'm so excited. So I love the skills competition. They, it's just all so fun. It's like my favorite event ever because you just get to see all of the players like not really have much of a rivalry. It's kind of them just like hanging out and you get to see them perform kind of and you get to see some skills. There's supposed to be an event at the Bellagio Fountains. There's going to be a thing. I know I probably butchered that, but there's going to be a skills competition there. My favorite part or my favorite competition is the speed and the breakaway uh, where 
or is it called the I don't know if that's maybe it is the breakaway one I don't know what it is it's the one where they go up to the net and there's like four plates in the corners of the net and they have to break them as fast as I can it's so fun I get too excited so then I stumble over my words but I love the speed competition where two players from each team like verse each other and it's kind of like a real it's kind of like a relay race in speed so you kind of just get to see how fast every player is going and it's crazy but it's so fun I love it um I'm just so excited uh so that's gonna be my night and my weekend I'm super excited it's my favorite thing ever and I don't think our captain's gonna be with us for very much longer so I'm really glad that he gets this opportunity before I get into the topic I wanted to mention I want to make a video where I just talk about the winter sports books in my TBR I was going to do a video books to read during the Olympics but I feel like I've already kind of done like I talk about hockey books so much that I feel like people are probably sick of it anyway so I'm like I'm not gonna do that but maybe I'll just do a sports books recommendation video for February anyway but I just wanted to kind of talk about the books that I want to read that are based on winter sports so maybe I'll do that video but I'm looking for a book that is set at a ski resort or like has snowboarding involved like just a book where the protagonists are going to a ski resort or they're going to like a snow lodge and they're going to go snowboarding like I just want to read a book like that so badly someone did give me a recommendation on twitter when I asked but the problem is is it's in Australia and it's $25 on book depository and I don't want to spend $25 it's about a 16 year old girl who goes on a ski trip for school and it is an own voices book for autistic representation and ADHD and also sensory processing disorder and I want to read it it sounds good but it's not available here but if you do have a ski or snowboarding book that is set at a resort please give it to me I want it, I want it so bad I just need to read a book about that for some reason. I'm just in the mood for it. I want it. So if you have any recommendations, please let me know. And let's move on to the topic now because I got too excited about sports like always. <laughs> now I'm going to just talk in, I have been doing like an outline. So we're going to first start off with the reading trackers that I use or how I track my reading. So I use Goodreads, the story graph, and I use Google Sheets. And I am currently using the spreadsheet from Book Riot. Everything I mentioned will be linked down below. And this one I've never used before. I used to use Allie from Hardback Hoarders Google Sheets for a while. She has a reading spreadsheet. I'll have it linked down below. But I wanted to try something new. So I decided to try out the Book Riot reading tracker. It is a Google spreadsheet kind of thing. And it is really good. I enjoy it. But there are some things that I would like to add. I know I can add to it, but there are different pages. So the one page is for just the reading harder challenge. And that actually links up to your reading log, which is the first page. And you can just type in the number that is associated and then it'll link up. And I love that. I love spreadsheets. They're really fun. You may find this out or you just may know already by assumption I love just putting lists together like my first episode I was talking about the reading challenges I want to do and I just love putting lists together even if I don't stick to them <laughs> and so that is why I love the story graph um I am on the story graph but I also am on goodreads and I'm gonna talk about that but yes I'm on goodreads I've been on there since I think 2012 so it's been a while but I like Goodreads for things and I like the story graph for other things. Today on the story graph they gave you your 2021 wrap up which was really fun so I'll go through that um, but I used Google Sheets primarily to track my reading and Notion. I used Notion to track my own library and just do like my shelf reduction things because it calculates everything and I don't have to do like the whole math in spreadsheets 
I don't know how to do the Excel or Google Sheets math and stuff. I suck at math, so I don't really know what I'm doing when I'm using using it. Even though I took a class in college, I that's another thing. I hate I really hated that I had to do that. Like it was like a curricular that was mandatory to take. Uh that was so annoying. Um, but I did take a class on it, so I should have been able to figure it out. But my teacher was really mean, so yeah. But I like Notion because it just kind of does all the math for me. I know I could just like try and figure it out, but it just feels like a lot. So yes, I use primarily sheets to just track all my reading. Now let's talk about the story graph. I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of the story graph and Goodreads. I love the story graph. If you don't know what it is, it is just another form of Goodreads, I guess. I don't want to like compare it to Goodreads because it's not to be compared to Goodreads, but it has similar attributes. So you can use it as a virtual library, basically just like Goodreads. It is black owned and it is awesome. I love them because they really listen to their audience and they do a lot of good and they just have really fun features. I love the reading challenge feature. You can click the reading challenges and you can browse and you can join and then you can add the books to the prompts and then it tracks it. I love that. I just love tracking my progress of things and it is so much easier to participate in a readathon that way and I have been loving that feature so much. Like I said, I love tracking things. I love lists and so this is such a better way to track what I'm going to be reading instead of like having like a whole Google Doc. They also have a recommendations feature and it's actually based on the books that you've added and I love that. It's so fun. I haven't gotten a specific recommendation, like I haven't used it for the purpose of recommendations, but I just like that it's there. Another thing about the story graph, which is really fun, is that it doesn't let you comment on things. I love that. You can react with like a heart to what people are reading or what they reviewed, but no one can comment. I realized when I was filming this the first time that I am not going to be accepting requests from people that I don't know or trust. So my only, only my close friends or people that I actually trust and talk to, I will be accepting requests from. So if you do want to follow me on the story graph, you can follow me, but please don't request me because I went through a thing where someone requested me and then the book I saw they were reading, it did not make me very happy because it was like, what the hell? Why? Why? So I deleted them and so I have my own boundary now that I'm not going to be accepting requests. You can follow me, but please don't request me because I just want to have people that I want on there instead of like random people that I don't know. Um, so <laughs> yeah, that's something that I discovered when I was recording because I was like, oh, I like, I hate that I can see people on my feed because there's like a community feed and I hate that I can see people that I don't want and then I was like, wait, why don't I just not request them or just delete the request? <laughs> Easy as that. So you can follow me, but please don't request me unless you're someone that I look that I know, or you can actually just, by now you should know if you're a close friend of mine or not. And so if you're not, then you're probably just going to get a delete and decline on StoryGraph because I just want to carry it to myself and not have to go through what I already went through on the app. So that's a thing. So just wanted to kind of point that out. But I do like that because what I don't like about Goodreads is that people can comment on my stuff. And I've had that happen in the past where transphobes comment on my trans reviews and it's so annoying. I'm just like, leave me alone, please. What I don't like about Goodreads is the modding is really bad. So I'm going to get into that when I talk about Goodreads, but the story graph is awesome. I really enjoy it. They also added a buddy read feature, which I want to try out. And I just think that they're really good at listening to their audience and just making things that we want. There is a plus subscription. I don't have that, so I don't know what it entails, but you know what? Good for them. I really enjoy it. If you're not on it, I highly recommend it. I think it's really fun. And if you just want like a chill reading app, 
I highly recommend it. If you're a stats person, you'll really enjoy this because there is a stats feature and it tracks throughout your whole year. You can curate it to mood and pace, length, fiction versus nonfiction, genres, format, authors, books and pages, and star ratings. Now with genres, it's a little complicated because some of them aren't technically genres, like young adult is not a genre, it's a demographic, LGBTQI plus is not a genre, it's a like theme, I guess I would say. I was gonna say it should be a mood, but I don't think that it would actually work as a mood, but I get why they just have it in genre, but I think they should change that to genre and like maybe like genre and themes. In, or genre and subjects, maybe you should do it more like that. I feel like that's what the moods kind of thing is, but I think they should have a feature that just says subjects because LGBT, I would say, is a subject. But that's the story graph. I really enjoy it. Um, let me talk about really quick. They gave me today, I think. Yeah, eight hours ago, they gave me my 2021 reading wrap up, and I think it's awesome. They show you a graph of books read, pages read, and so that's cool. It just shows you like how much you actually read. <laughs> I think it said to me something about, oh, it turns out September wasn't your favorite month. <laughs> yeah, I think I read like two books. It was like the Slapshot Readathon, so I only read those books, which is totally fine. But it also tells you how many new to you authors that you read. And that was amazing. It told me that I explored 117 new authors, including Adiba Jagadar and Aisha Saeed. And I forgot that Adiba was my new to me author. I mean, I did read The Hannah Wars. It was her debut. And also 35 books I read were part of a series. I really like that they did this. It was really cool. It was a nice surprise. So that is it on the story graph. I really enjoy it and I highly recommend it if you are interested and you aren't on it already. Please, please follow me. Do not request a, do not friend request me. Please don't. <laughs> you can follow me. Don't request me as a friend unless we're friends. And no, we're not friends if I've literally only talked to you a couple times. Like, I know who I'm friends with and I know who I'm not friends with and that's a whole thing that's gonna be coming out on my channel hopefully in February oh, because we need some boundaries here <laughs> we need some because I'm I know who I'm friends with and I think you should also know if you're friends with me or not if you're a follower of mine and you like my content we are not friends <laughs> just need to kind of make that clear Unless I talk to you in DMs very frequently, then we are friends. That is it. Now, let's talk about Goodreads. I have been using Goodreads since 2012, I believe. If I actually go on my Goodreads, it should actually tell me when I started. But I like Goodreads and I use it because I like the features that it has. I really like the lists. I like to look through it. When I was looking for the snowboarding books that I want to read, I was using the lists on Goodreads because there is the genre portion where you can, I mean, sports is not a genre, we know, but okay, well, the Goodreads app sucks, so... <laughs> that can be something I can talk about, but I like it for the features that it has. And I also use it because I want to help authors get reviews because some authors do depend on Goodreads for reviews. And so I'm probably not going to stop using Goodreads unless there's something that comes along that authors can depend on for reviews. And so I use it to review books, especially ones that are sent to me. I put them on Goodreads, but I don't really have too much of a problem. Some people do, that's fine. I know a lot of authors depend, well, I guess they don't depend, but they, it's nice to be like having like the Goodreads Choice Award sticker on your book. So I guess I would say that some authors do depend on it, especially indie publishers and like small 
debut authors or self-published authors. I know a lot of authors do depend on Goodreads, so I'm going to keep using it to help authors and that is why I still use Goodreads. I also just really like the giveaway portion. I really like to use it for, like I said, lists and just getting recommendations. Groups, I've been using groups on there for the Read Harder Challenge with Book Riot because there's a group and I've got some recommendations from it. So that was good. So I don't really think Goodreads is horrible, but I do see the issues with it. The interface sucks. It obviously the app sucks. I can't even find out when I first started. <laughs> I mean, I guess if I do like the last book that I've ever added, that's probably when, but really, well, I guess if I go to like reading challenges, maybe it'll tell me. No, it literally doesn't even do that. So that's just awesome, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I didn't realize that their app sucks. <laughs> their app sucks. Uh, but I do like the little scan feature. I used to use that a lot where you can like take a picture of your book and scan it in instead of like typing it in. <laughs> so that's cool. I guess that that is something, but oh, there's also like the little library feature where you can like see if, um, the book is on your library. So I think Goodreads does have a lot of good, but I am excited to see what else the Storygraph has in store because they, it looks like they have a lot of stuff coming and it's great. I don't have a plus subscription to the Storygraph, but if you do, let me know in the comments. I would like to know your thoughts on it, how it is. Um, and that's kind of it. Uh, I hate Goodreads because people comment. Like I said, I just don't want the stupid transphobes commenting on my reviews. It happens so much. It's so annoying. Well, I shouldn't say so much, but it has happened before a couple times and it's so annoying. So I love the story graph because no one can comment on my stuff. You can like it and that's it. And I don't mind when people comment nice things, but if you're going to be annoying and ruin my whole day, then just please leave me alone. <laughs> And that's it. Those are the things that I use to track my reading. Let me know if you use Storygraph or Goodreads, which you like better. I'm going to still use Goodreads because I'm going to help authors out and that is why I use it. Now let's get into the reading apps. I'm really excited about this portion. I'm just excited about this topic in general. It's really fun. Now we're moving on to reading apps. I use Libby and Hoopla, which are library apps. Now they're very different. Libby is connected to Overdrive and if your library has these apps you can check and so with Libby it is the traditional library borrowing system so if you want an audiobook or an ebook you can do that and I don't believe that there's I mean with my library there's not a limit yours might but with Hoopla you can actually access everything from movies to comics to audiobooks to ebooks and you depending on your library you get a certain amount every month minus five and I hate that <laughs> because what if I want more than five I know why it's because of like budgeting and everything like that I actually like Hoopla I like it because I can just access it whenever and I don't have to like wait for someone else who's online. So I really do like Hoopla. It also has a really good selection. So I don't believe that Hoopla is based on your library. I don't really know too much about it, but I think that Hoopla is just a service and database for everyone. And so Hoopla kind of decides what they put on there. I really enjoy it. I'm so glad my library got it and it is such a fun, nice app to use. I like to read comics on there because I will say, I don't know, sometimes I like to read physical but I really like to read comics and graphic novels on my iPad because I can zoom in and in like a physical copy I can't. My eyes are shit so I can't see. I sometimes the text is so small that I would like to just zoom in in real life with a physical book. And I got a lot of my audiobooks and ebooks from my library. So those are the two apps that I really use. I also have my Kindle app. That's how I read my books usually. I also have the Kobo app. So I have like a couple just because some books only come on Kobo. Some are accessed with Kindle and I primarily use my Kindle app and 
yeah, that's how I read books. <laughs> so I use my Kindle app to read my ebooks or my ARCs, but I also have been using the NetGalley shelf app because some books you need that and I don't like it at all. Not really. I don't like it. <laughs> um, it's okay, but I think that that's why I'm not really reading Game On because I'm only reading it from that app because it formatted really weird in my Kindle app. So I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm gonna do that. But it's okay. I don't really like it that much, but I'll use it. And I also use Scribd. I'm not currently a member, but I do like to use it for audiobooks. I don't like Libro FM. I like Libro FM's message, and I really like what the service has, but I'm not someone that wants an audiobook a month. I need more than one. And I know you can buy them at all, but I like Scribd because I kind of have unlimited. I know it's not technically unlimited, but I can have more than one and I don't have to do a credit. I don't like the credit system. That's why I don't like Audible either. I just can't do a credit system. It doesn't work for me. But I do have Libro FM on my phone and it's an app I use because I am in the ALC program so I can listen to audiobooks through that. Um, when I listened to Icebreaker, the audiobook on the NetGalley shelf app, it worked. So that was fun, but I think that's the only way that you can listen to audiobooks through NetGalley. But correct me if I'm wrong because I've only done it once, so I have no idea. Now on to the book recommendations. So I get a lot of my book recommendations from social media, primarily Instagram or booktube, but I have this one app that I wanted to talk about. I downloaded it, I think in 2020. And it is so cool. It is called We Read Too. And oh, maybe I'll screen record a little bit. It is so cool. I think I found it on Instagram or something like that. But it is so cool because it just gives you book recommendations. So here's a young adult. You can do middle grade, chapter book, picture. And you can just search and just find out different books and then you can like favorite them so I think it's a really fun app and it is very diverse so if you're looking for some diverse books to add to your TBR and you just kind of want to scroll I think this is a really good app and I am not sponsored I'm just talking about apps but if an app would like to sponsor me they can just make sure you're an international app because I'm not going to take any apps that don't allow people to use it internationally. I don't know if this one you can, I'm sorry, but I like it. It's really good and you can find a lot of good recommendations. Yeah, and then if you want the, um, so it tells you the length of the book, the genre, the date it was released, the synopsis, and then you can click view online and it'll take you to the book's purchase page. So that's really cool. I really like this app and if you haven't heard of it, I highly recommend downloading it, but I do understand because some people, you just don't have the space, <laughs> but I think it's a really cool app. So that is one recommendation app I would like to recommend. But a, another one is TikTok. I get a lot of recommendations from BookTok and then I like screenshot them and they're in my camera roll. I also use, well, this says Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Obviously, that's how I get all my book recommendations, but I also really like that app. I can also get recommendations, obviously, from like Goodreads and the Story Graph and all of that, but if you have any other book recommendation apps, leave them in the comments. So that is it for today's episode. Thank you for listening or watching. If you are on YouTube, you can follow me on Instagram at Pucks and Paperbacks, and if you want to send in some problem that you have and you want my advice on you can send it to reader rambles podcast at gmail.com and if you want to suggest a topic to me there's a link down below to a google form i also have a patreon where you can pledge one dollar to become a paperback pal you will have episodes every sunday for the podcast and you'll also have our private discord and our book club you can join thank you for listening and if you want 
to add to the conversation, leave your comments down below in the YouTube comments and I will get to you. If you're on Apple Podcasts, you can review and I have to check. I think you can review on Spotify, but if you want to leave a review of the podcast, I would really appreciate it and I will see you next week with another episode. Bye! Thank <laughs> you.